Hello and welcome to another episode of the Startup Operator Roundup. I'm Roshan Karyapa and I'm Gunjan Saha and together we break down the biggest headlines from India's startup ecosystem. This week we'll be talking about Gemini which is Google's latest and most advanced AI model designed to rival the likes of OpenAI's ChatGPT4. Closer home facing financial troubles, Baiju's is exploring multiple options for a fresh cash infusion as the company struggles financially. The stakes are high and Baiju Ravindran is all in to help the company overcome these obstacles. Meanwhile, last week the RBI stepped in to introduce a regulatory framework with a focus on fair practices and data privacy for lending businesses. And the Open Network for Digital Commerce or ONDC has unveiled its Built for Bharat initiative to promote innovation within the e-commerce space and solve industry challenges. From the fintech space, uh, Zest Money has decided to shut down operations. Regulatory restrictions among others have forced this company to terminate its 8-year long journey. But amidst this ups and downs of this ecosystem, Zerodha has achieved a remarkable feat. Uh, they have generated 2 rupees and 30 paise in revenue for every rupee that they have spent. And amidst this trouble times, I think that's a great achievement. Amazing. So a lot of things to discuss in this week's roundup, so stay tuned. If you're tuning in to our channel for the first time, we uh, break down the biggest headlines of the week, talk to some fantastic founders, operators, and investors from the ecosystem. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you're a regular listener, then please do like this video and leave a review for us on your favorite podcast platform. So let's get started. Uh, Roshan, seems like it's colder on your side of the table. <laughs> well, I mean. Uh... older so colder i suppose <laughs> right uh, but yeah bangalore is cold by bangalore standards i mean we're seeing low to mid 20s uh, weather right now uh, which <laughs> doesn't translate too well uh, when you talk to folks abroad right i mean yeah. this is like pleasant weather for them but uh, anyway uh, i'll be going to chennai so hopefully that will be a change right so well uh, but a lot has happened so yeah let's get started with the news yeah the biggest highlight last week was you know google unveiling gemini uh they are touting it uh, that you know this is much much better than uh chat gpt gpt4 <clears throat> and on 32 performance measures mm. gemini has outscored in 30 of these parameters but for me what was really you know i think this is ground breaking is because google has completely redesigned the multi modality aspect of yeah. large language models yeah. and instead of connecting separate models together to kind of you know form a multi modal setup google has done that grounds up So what do you think do you think this is again the chat gpt killer or as the battle is getting more fierce who do you think will emerge as the winner So my first reaction was god they shipped something <laughs> right i mean uh, not something that you can expect uh, from google on a regular basis anyway but uh, uh this is fantastic i mean i hope this is a chat gpt killer right i hope there's intense competition on either sides all sides mm-hmm. in fact uh right so we need that we definitely need that competitiveness uh, on uh, some of this fundamental stuff that's happening with respect to ai uh the two three key things that i saw is one that uh, your whole multimodal input right uh so it could recognize images it could recognize voice text etc i think that is a game changer if you ask me the demo was fabulous uh you know <laughs> of course there was some controversy that <laughs> yeah. you know it was uh, you know beautified per se right or it was embellished and so on but uh, that's okay right i mean i think that was minor to so to speak and uh, the 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 potential still came through uh, right so uh it's fantastic i mean you guys should absolutely check out that 3 or 4 minute video uh very very nicely done uh, i i think that multimodality is a key thing right uh and the second thing is uh, they've obviously ranked it based on a bunch of these parameters whether it is its ability to answer scientific questions um mathematics so on and so forth and it ranks uh, you know overwhelmingly better than uh, uh chat gpt in terms of uh, in gpt in terms of a bunch of these right except for one or two uh so so this is going to be used in their bard right uh, which is which is not paid right now yeah. uh so i don't know i mean a bunch of people may switch to bard 
because uh, what you have on uh, chat gpt is now the the previous version of uh, uh, the algorithm right i mean yeah. the previous version which is 3.5 right now gpt is running 4 i think right yeah that's for gpt <clears throat> plus users but i think they have stopped onboarding new users given that they are not able to handle right. that much traffic yeah <clears throat> so that and and uh, uh, gemini also has about three versions uh, yeah. it has the ultra the pro and the nano i think nano. Uh, ultra is not yet out for users and a lot of these claims are about the ultra itself right uh, it, it'll be interesting it'll definitely be interesting uh, so arman sundar sundar is back in the news right <laughs> i mean it was all about satya for a while but uh, sundar you know has come back with that you know this proper first bench uh, rivalry you know so so it's great stuff great mm-hmm. stuff and uh, you know uh, again you know i i really hope that the iterations are a lot quicker a lot faster and um, yeah I, i hope that we see more progress on this front well you are soon going to get um, you know gemini nano on your phone oh is it yeah oh I mean, the pixel yeah the pixel uh, oh, wow. 8 onwards are going to receive that update i'm on a pixel 6 <laughs> but uh, <laughs> for later i suppose <laughs> yeah but uh, so you mentioned about the three tiers of the pricing plan for gemini right? i think that really addresses a key issue within the whole ai space is that ai is not easy to run right you do not have the economies of scale associated with it because every time you given a command the algorithm needs to run right um so by providing different tiers of the platform i think they are addressing a key concern which is the cost and that will as we progress will become more effective yeah. uh, and the other thing is that google stock really took a beating after um, you know the whole chat gpt got announced but right now looks like google will soon get back in the game hmm you can never discount uh, you know the large masses of engineers that are uh, hired at uh, palo alto and google right i mean so yeah you you can't i mean uh, it it's really on a lot of these fronts right whether it is ai whether it is search uh, whether it is you know even i would stick my neck out and say even autonomous cars and what not right i mean it's google's market to lose really i mean you guys should have been around maybe 15 16 years ago uh you know you would always hear hey but google can build that yeah, i was there 15 years ago just I mean, to I'm, clarify I'm on the startup scene you know i, mean, <laughs> I know you were born that time i mean around that time right i mean maybe 2 years or whatever it was but uh, uh google was um, i mean it was ubiquitous in every market right anything digital people would mm-hmm. say that hey google can kind of build that right uh, and it's been a sorry state of affairs since but i really hope that they can you know come back and and build some fundamental stuff because see some of these larger companies google amazon meta uh, right these are the guys who can um, microsoft as well right these are the folks who can invest in this kind of stuff right when they have like huge uh, numbers on their balance sheets hmm. right it's not going to be a startup in a garage uh, with four people working at it right i mean um, yeah so so it's good it's a net positive for uh, all of us and i also hope that uh, you know it's a lot more open as well uh, right so to that end the competition will at least lower the costs and reduce the barriers yeah moving on um, byju ravindran is really hustling to manage byju's liquidity crisis uh, on last tuesday he had a two hour long call with a group of senior executives and promising that you know the, the company will bite through the f- uh, liquidity crisis over in the next 45 to 60 days Sources reveal that Byju requires a cash infusion of 500 to 600 crores by March to settle pending employee dues, vendor payments, tax obligations, and the latest, which is the commitments to BCCI. The company has faced multiple financial challenges, which has led Byju Ravindran to borrow from friends, family, and other entrepreneurs in recent months just to pay out salaries to its employees. But despite all of these efforts, the company is facing a shortfall of 60 to 70 crores every month. The situation has become so dire for this company that you know Byju Ravindran is currently relying on selling the assets Byju has acquired in the 2021 2020 period and still that is not being enough. The situation is so dire that Byju Ravindran is now pledging his own homes and other properties owned by his family members to raise money to pay off the staff. So how likely do you think Byju is going to tide through all of this in the next 2 months? uh it's just a s- sad state of affairs and really nobody wants to see a founder in so much of distress right um you know i mean people can say that it's a pr spin and and what not right but hey 
be that as it may right i mean uh, whatever that is i mean we don't know right we mm. we don't know what we don't know let's take things at face value uh, here is someone who's fighting to save a startup right uh, and by this is a classic case of flying too close to the sun right i mean they rocketed to what 20 21 billion dollar valuation and they're down to about 3 billion dollars at this point i think um it's going to take a herculean effort really you know mm. at some point of time it might be you know uh, valuable enough for some kind of a pe firm to come and take a sizable stake put in a professional management in place uh, by the way byju byju is not the ceo right i mean they have mm. a different ceo so really you know hire a new leadership team etc put the system process in place to kind of run this right because obviously you know they've spent a shit ton of uh, money over the last 3 or 4 years uh, and and there is some value in terms of uh, you know brand logistics operations technology and what not right now how much that will uh, be valued at i mean is anybody's guess really but certainly not you know 3 or 5 billion dollars uh, as as is the case right now right so the the ch- really challenging thing for uh, byjus is that kind of loss of trust yeah. right loss of trust with all stakeholders whether it is investors whether it is uh, you know consumers and so on right consumers we have seen all these kind of allegations on misselling and what not right and on the investor side i mean we've seen auditors uh, resign we've seen board of directors resign uh, so it's not a good look for sure right so uh, it's going to be a long drawn out uh, saga right and it's not the last piece of news that we will hear about mm-hmm. by jus i mean it, this is this will be an ongoing thing uh, i suppose right i i really do hope that um, you know all of them have the kind of mental resolve to tide things over because uh, it, it can be hard on founders man it can be really hard you know uh, people may think that hey i mean this person has made all of this money so it's okay for them to suffer a little but that's just you know people <laughs> people's own sort of uh, projections of what it is right i mean it's it's never okay to suffer um and uh, yeah let's hope uh, let's hope there is some kind of a resolution on this front i would say mm. and see the thing is i have no love lost for him okay mm. but it's tough being that guy in that scenario man fucking imagine like unless you're a complete psycho like a sociopath or something mm. which not many people are right i mean maybe like i don't know one in some Three thousand nine. maybe or not oh. even thousand one in maybe like i don't know million people will be like a thought ten thousand people might be like complete psycho sociopath type who is mm. not at all affected by anything apne duniya mein chal raha type right mm. so unless you're that no, type, no, it's good. you must I be like getting good. fucked right i mean poor guy <laughs> any made his money doesn't mean that he should suffer he should live with the consequences yes okay go on fuck <laughs> startup san philosophy so last week ondc announced a new build for bharat initiative which is aimed to promote innovation in the digital commerce space and solve industry challenges the initiative expects more than 200 participants from startups companies and colleges across 50 plus cities the winners will be receiving opportunities equity free grants and even cloud credits from antler google cloud india and ondc so uh, i think it's been just over a year that ondc was announced right and you know the media was full of headlines saying okay this is india's next upi moment but was it reality today because i do not use ondc on a regular basis even though it's much more cost effective than food delivery platforms i do not find ondc to be very much accessible what do you think the success for ondc will look like see getting adoption on technology is a whole other challenge right uh, you can have the protocols you can have the uh, technology but adoption is uh, is is a whole other ball game right uh, yes technically i think there are personally i'm really excited by a lot of these things but it'll take time to build these out right uh, it'll take a namayatri for example coming in and you know building these uh, out mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know for autos in bangalore or something else in kochi etc right i mean it will require people to sort of step in build that Uh, and there too you know i mean it's not just about building an app and you know letting it grow in a product led fashion right i mean mm-hmm. uh, namayatri is realizing that right now right because they have some trouble with the uh, auto drivers union here a bunch of those folks have uh, uh, have asked the auto drivers to sort of uh, not use the app right uh, <clears throat> so it's going to take a lot of time and effort to, to really uh, build this out you know uh now upi 
although it was growing it had that one major inflection pa- point which was the whole demonetization right true now what will it be for you know uh, for commerce for mobility we don't know right uh, if if there is one such inflection point you can see you know adoption rise up uh, otherwise it will require phenomenal time effort money to sort of build that adoption i would say so so we're still in the early stages of uh, all of this uh, right so let's hope it happens in time yeah folks if you have been using the any of the apps to access ondc to order food or anything else let us know what your experience has been like in the comments below moving on last week rbi had uh, made some major announcements on its uh, regulatory policies uh, governor shantikanta das said that the central bank plans to introduce a unified regulatory framework for web aggregators of loan products across all regulated entities So what they essentially means is that the RBI will be soon coming up with a policy bazaar like platform for for uh, companies that offer loans. Uh, they'll be aggregating loan offers from multiple lenders on a electronic platform, which allows the borrowers to compare and choose the best available option to avail loan from one of the available lenders. The governor also said that there is a need for a comprehensive approach. stating that existing guidelines on connected lending are limited in scope and lack uniform applicability to all regulated entities now over the over the years right especially from last year we saw the whole rise of fintechs the bnpl and you know unsecured lending <coughs> and digital lending became mainstream so mm. i think it's really positive that you know the rbi is stepping in to introduce this regulatory framework but how do you think this will pan out uh so if we step back to a year year and a half uh, ago right i mean the whole account ag- ag- account aggregators framework was in- introduced right mm. which is that you know you have to go through a whole bunch of kyc you have to share your data with like you know each lender individually uh, right rather than that i mean you have this one framework where uh, you know lenders can easily access some of this information mm. with your consent right uh, and this was basically uh, to make credit more accessible to people and so on i think this kind of takes it to a different level right now we have a sort of a consumer portal of sorts uh, where you know people can buy and compare and and so on right yeah i mean it, it's good uh, i would say right i mean although you know the government records the government's record of uh, running technology portals is is not that great right i mean mm. one of the larger id services firms will pr- perhaps take this up and let's hope that you know it's in ship form uh, for uh, you know for people to be able to use it uh, right but it's fine it's it's okay i think uh, as long as they don't mandate that you know people should only buy from here Mm-hmm. um uh, it's it's all good i suppose right so think of it as an equivalent of your b map or whatever right yeah. i mean your um the government app so to speak where you can use your upi on beam you can use your upi elsewhere also yeah. yeah i think also this also solves for a big uh challenge which is discoverability right mm-hmm. i think this platform will solve for that otherwise i remember like uh, my dad used to my dad was a had an account with access bank and the first thing he would when he would need a loan would check with access bank rather than checking with you know what is the interest rate hdfc is offering sbi access right. and the like so i think discoverability is one of the key problems this platform will be solving for yeah there are aggregators but uh, yeah i mean this uh, this is uh, welcome sure uh but not all of rbi's policies have been you know really welcomed by the startup ecosystem zest money has decided to shut down operations in december as a result of a uh, june 2022 guideline which RBI had issued that prohibited non-bank prepaid instrument issuers from loading instruments with credit lines. Mm. So Zest Money at its peak was a company that was valued at 475 million dollars, right? And they did a great job leveraging the India tech stack and they brought in the innovation with whole digital eKYC and online identification. But unfortunately due to this regulatory restrictions among other reasons has forced the company to shut down shop and lay off around 130 or 150 employees. they uh, sometime in 2021 they also tried to acquire get acquired by phone pay that was a deal which was pegged around 200 to 300 million dollars but that uh, fell through then even the founders had exited post this right um lizzy chapman priya sharma and ashish anantaram they decided to exit the company and now the new leadership that had taken over while they were optimistic when they joined but now they're saying that lack of business growth and funding opportunities is what's forcing them to wrap up business no it's a difficult space to operate in at this point of time the regulations have kind of made it uh, 
you know almost impossible uh, right so yeah it is it is difficult uh, you know we will we'll see what happens uh, going forward you know but I, I, in the interim period it's it's yeah it's quite difficult right so when the new leadership replaced the founders uh, they were quite optimistic about the business as a whole but now they're citing lack of business growth and funding opportunities as the key reason why they're deciding to shut shop so what do you make of that so it's been downhill for them over the last couple of years right since when the phone pay acquisition went south uh, and then the rbi guidelines new guidelines came in and then the founders exited and so on so it, this was you know in inevitable in some sense it's also a very difficult space to operate in at this point of time your entire business model uh, is <laughs> is gone sideways uh, right so yeah i mean sad well but it's not all doom and gloom in the fintech space uh, zeros are released its fi23 results and they continue to show growth and profitability revenues climbed up 22% year on year while operating expenditures increased by just 15% as a result there were 55% um operating profit margin wow now zero that has managed to capture a large customer base with minimal spending on advertising i think they just rely on word of mouth i have not seen a zero the advertisement um they offer free trading for shares held longer than a day and charge a flat fee of rupees 20 for futures options and trading intraday trading this low margin high volume business model really set them apart and has been working out really well with them but they're competing with the you know behemoths like hdfc and icici which i'm sure is a very daunting task right so how do you think they will compare against them against them as well as with upcoming companies like upstocks and grow so if you look at the top 10 brokers right now that list has completely transformed right or uh, your hdfc icici securities motilal oswal angel broking etc have all been pushed down right and you have the fintechs like zero the up stocks grow and so on right uh, so so they're doing fairly well uh, you know i mean obviously there will be pressure uh, you know with the others spending on advertising customer acquisition and so on but they have a very loyal you know fan base of customers right myself included uh, they got that model right you know uh, they were one of the first to in, you know introduce that zero commission uh, brokerage uh and you know they've introduced a bunch of other products as well mm-hmm. right so they've been a super innovative company and you know uh, really someone to uh, emulate both the founders in fact mm-hmm. right uh, so yeah props to them really i mean if they're able to um, you know grow at the rate in, in which they're growing right mm-hmm. and it is one of their aims as well to become the berkshire of india in some sense uh, right it'll, it'll be amazing i i can't wait for the time when they list mm-hmm. you know <laughs> but you know something that really i mean does not make sense to me is that why is the media always so curious as to know how much are is nitin kamath and nikhil kamath earning they can earn whatever they want right i mean there were some reports on uh, them earning some 200 crores uh, salary or whatever mm. right i it's mean it's always been a hot topic for the media no i mean given the value the guy is creating and given the fact that it's entirely private right it's none of your business i mean he could take like 99% of the profits also right i mean hey uh, how does it matter yeah. it doesn't and that's the beauty of being private as well right truly private i'm not talking about you know with a bunch of investors or what not mm. uh, that you can run the business the way you want to you know but although i mean they're being really sensible on that front also because they know that you know going forward i mean they may become that berkshire or whatever mm. and so they need to have a proper track record you know so trust is an important thing and it tends to um, you know so especially for these kind of businesses where you know it is a long term view mm. uh, you know you're building a company that compounds uh, every year you don't want to exchange uh, pennies for the dollar you know so yeah the, the growth the real growth is uh, yet to come for them mm. and i think the best times are yet to come for zero the uh it can be a huge huge business and the great thing is that it'll grow as the market grows we're right now at about 5% of uh, equity holders in the country right i mean you know when it goes to 10 20 30% <laughs> obviously you know the market size grows the business grows so it, it's going to be a phenomenal phenomenal uh, business you know yeah. uh, look at how for example cdsl mcx all of these stocks have performed over the last uh, you know a um, couple of years with the whole enthusiasm about the markets and so on i think zero da will grow manifoldly um, basis that so yeah really is going to be something to behold
Yeah. Well, another th- risky thing is that if the markets go down, your business also goes down. So, and the and the Kamat brothers have been really mindful of that, and that's how they've built the business. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So before moving on to the talk of the town section, let's quickly, you know, uh, talk about the key fundraisers of the week. Funding in the Indian startup ecosystem still remains bleak as we are ending the year, and most likely this trend will likely to continue in twenty twenty four as well. But uh, last week, generative AI startup Servum AI raised $41 million in a Series A round, which was led by Lightspeed Venture Partners and supported by Peak15 Partners and Khosla Ventures. D2C startup The Sleep Company raised about $22 million from Premji Invest and Fireside Ventures. Core EL Technologies has raised $16 million from 360 One Asset Management. And Dairy Fintech startup Digivriddhi Technologies raised $6 million from Omedia Network India, Omnivore, and InfoH Ventures. Digivriddhi really stands out for me because I never knew there was something called a dairy fintech startup. Well, arguably, Stellabs, who we had on the podcast, also does dairy fintech. Right, they offer loans. See, this is why you should <laughs> listen to the podcast, uh, Gunjan. <laughs> <laughs> they also offer loans and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a interesting set of fundraisers for sure, right? Sarvam especially. Hmm. Uh, they're building something fundamental and I really hope that there are more such uh, AI startups uh, that are funded, you know. Yeah. Uh, God knows India needs a lot more of uh, this kind of new IP for sure. Right. So for the talk of the town section, we have this interesting tweet by Gokul Rajaram, who sits on uh, boards of multiple companies, including uh, DoorDash. He says that the bar for technology companies to go public on the US exchanges today is $500 million of annualized high margin revenue. Uh, that includes the likes of Clavio, Instacart and uh, ARM. Uh, while in other geographies, the bar to go public is much lower. In India, for example, the bar is around 70 to $100 million in annualized revenue. And this is the reason why many Indian companies are no longer rushing to incorporate in the US. What do you hmm. make of that? I don't think it's even 70 to $100 million actually. I think, uh, you know, $70 million will be something like 600 crores or something. Right? I think if you have a, a decent enough uh, profit margin, uh, you could, in, in, you know, uh, you could list on the SME exchange and given the amount of uh, enthusiasm there is for IPOs at this point mm. of time, if you are a healthy business, uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of scope to raise money from the public for sure, right? So, uh, but it's an, the larger point, right? I mean, is is interesting how uh, the overall perspective has shifted from growth to profitability, you know, even in the US with all of these valuations being more tempered, um, you know, platinum, class uh, companies trading at single digit multiples and whatnot right uh, so so yeah i mean uh, uh, what this also means is for the next couple of years uh, you know it's going to be difficult for uh, startups right because mm-hmm. we we spoke about swiggy for example right now they want to list in 2024 but will they be able to have a successful ipo that is different. yet to be seen right um, and at the same time will they also be able to raise a growth round that can you know kind of support them i'm not sure about that also because not many growth rounds have happened as well yeah so the next couple of years for some of these late stage startups i would uh, say right is going to be very tricky if you're able to navigate this couple of years and sort of come out uh, after that i mean then you could look at you know listing and whatnot the other thing is that if you are near profitability then the alternate route for you would be to sort of grow organically, you know, and not take in additional capital so that you become a viable target for an acquisition if, if that is your route or even uh, IPO, right? I mean, mm-hmm. uh, at, at whatever time. So that is uh, also another route that is kind of opened up because of the, you know, because of where the markets are at this point of time. Okay. Also, last week, uh, the European Union became the first region to adopt AI regulations. The EU has reached a provisional agreement on how to regulate AI, especially general purpose and systemic risk models such as ChatGPT. The agreement imposes some restrictions on the operations of advanced AI models such as transparency, data summary, acceptable use policy and code of conduct. It will be interesting to see how other regions and countries follow uh, suit and what what takeaways they have from this regulation 
Yeah, I mean, if you look at the enthusiasm, you would almost uh, be confused. I mean, you might think that uh, they've achieved, uh, you know, AGI or something like that, right? <laughs> I mean, artificial general general intelligence. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the EU has a real, uh, uh, what do you call that? I mean, I, I can't find a decent word for that, Kida. right? Kida. Yeah, Kida, I, I suppose, right, for regulation. <clears throat> sort of very uh, bureaucracy uh, driven in that sense right mm-hmm. and there, there were so many jokes on this i mean there was there, there are a bunch of these ai ai regulators right or regulators mm-hmm. let's call them uh, posing for a photograph and someone had written that there are more regulators than ai engineers in, in the eu right uh, someone else had said uh, us and china builds while eu regulates or something like that <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a real joke, and it, it's it's also kind of sad, right? Because if you think about technology innovation, right? I mean, in the you know post uh, Second World War, uh, Europe made giant strides. I mean, you know, we spoke about some of those machines that uh, Ethereal is working on, for instance, yeah. right? I mean, all of those are <coughs> cornered by uh, you know these large fifty, sixty year old firms based in uh, Germany and whatnot. So for them to sort of devolve to the point where, you know, they're so enthusiastic about regulation and whatnot is, uh, I don't know. I mean, and we, we saw this with the, the, the Biden AI uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> regulation as well, right? Which is, I think the West is like really desperately trying to stay relevant in some ways. Yeah, but are they though? I mean, uh, uh, you know, if you look at any of the new technology startups and whatnot, I mean, th- those are not in the those are not in uh, the Europe uh, region at this point of time, yeah. right? So, yeah, I, I just found found it really weird how enthusiastic these folks were, you know. So, well, kudos to them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean, we can take a leaf out of some of this, mm. right? What to do and what not to do, also, mm. uh, right? Um, in all seriousness, I think obviously AI requires regulation, sane regulation, uh, but it should not be super bounded, right? Because we're still in the very, very early stages of this developing technology. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we, we kind of laugh at these regulators and whatnot, but it's a hard, hard, hard job, really hard job, right? Um, so, yeah, well, wish them luck, I suppose. <laughs> All right, folks, if you have any original takes on any of the topics that we discussed, please do let us know in the comments below or you can reach out to us on our social media platforms on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. Uh, We'll be happy to hear your thoughts. So yeah, thanks so much for staying with us right till the end. We really hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, hit that like button and share this episode with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel for regular updates from Indian startup ecosystem. So that's all folks for roundup number 137. We'll be back with more exciting updates for you in the next episode. Cheers guys. Enjoy. Enjoy.